Our next speaker is from the Learning and Work Institute and um, I'm very pleased to present its relatively new Chief Executive, uh, Stephen Evans. Stephen. Great, thank you very much. And I, I've been in post since September and I've had no management training since I joined, but the, um, I had, had done some before, I should, should reiterate for the record. Um, so, um, happy National Apprenticeships Week, National Careers Week, International Women's Day and Budget Day. Um, there's quite a lot going on. Um, so, the Learning and Work Institute is a national charity that works on employment, learning and skills policy and delivery. We've been around since 1922, so we've been around for a while. Um, and I want to focus on three things um, this morning. So the first is the focus that we have on apprenticeships and technical education. Um, the second is around quality um, that's been mentioned by others. And then the third is around um, access as well, which again has been touched on um, this morning. Um, so the first thing to say is it's really great that there's such a, such a focus at national government level on apprenticeships and technical education. Um, and I can't remember a time when um, the Chancellor made investment in technical education um, such a focus of the, the budget in the, in the weekend before. Um, Hugh, Hugh Dalton, who was Chancellor in 1947, did have to resign when details of one tax change ended up in the Evening Standard a few hours before the budget, whereas now we have chancellors touring TV studios the weekends before and placing things in newspapers. So things, things have changed somewhat. That's not a resigning matter anymore. Um, but, it, but it's great that that's, there's that focus there and that commitment, uh, particularly from Justine Greening and Robert Halfen as well, who I think are two very committed ministers to apprenticeships and technical education as a whole. Um, now, we've uh, published some analysis earlier this week, um, and we think that um, on current trends, the government's on target for about two and a half million apprenticeships by 2020. But we think that things like the levy, the public sector target, some of those other changes that are going on, will make sure that the government hits that three million target uh, by 2020. So we think they're on track uh, for the quantity. Um, and um, I think the challenge that we would bring is really around quality and also access. So I wanna talk about um, each of those. So in terms of quality, we've got some absolutely amazing apprenticeships in this country. Um, and we've heard some of those examples this morning and throughout the, uh, throughout the conference. And um, as a former uh, civil service fast streamer, I was really pleased to hear the, the examples coming out of the civil service, both in terms of entry routes, but also I had a, a promoted tweet on my Twitter timeline thing this morning about um, apprenticeships being an alternative entry route to the fast stream as well as the, as well as the fast track and other routes. So that's great because it enables the civil service to get access to a much wider range of talent than it would otherwise get. Certainly when I joined, which was, wasn't that long ago, uh, but was a while ago, um, it was very much a graduate thing. So it's great that we have those different routes now, now coming in. Um, so we have some great examples, but we also know from a number of studies, um, including reports published by Policy Exchange um, towards the end of last year, that there are some areas where the, the, the breadth and depth of our apprenticeships don't match up to the best in the world, to countries like Germany. So I think there's something around how do we make sure that all of our apprenticeships match the very best in the world in terms of their quality. Now that's not just about the breadth and depth of the training, I think it's also about the wider apprentice experience. So for example, do you get as an apprentice um, placements across different bits of the organisation or a mentor in a different part of the organisation or a chance to network with other apprentices, perhaps in similar firms um, in that sector. So we think that that really needs to be um, at the heart of the, the new set of reforms coming in. So for example, we've argued that there should be an apprentice on the board of the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education that's being um, introduced from April. There is going to be a separate panel of apprentices, that's a good thing, uh, but we think there should be an apprentice on the board of that body to make sure that voice gets in there just as much as employers. Um, and similarly on the levy, there's been a lot of um, 
positive and negative discussion about the impact of the levy and some of those management changes that we were just talking about in the, in the last um, presentation as well. For me, a bit like the civil service example, it's great if we're creating new routes into those management occupations um, that are not just graduate routes, um, but we also need to increase the total volume of training that we're doing. So we need to hit the three million apprenticeships. We need to make sure that the levy is spent, and I'm sure that it will be, but we need to increase the overall volume of training um, in addition to that as well. So I think there's a kind of, um, we think we're on target to hit the three million by 2020. Um, we think there's some brilliant apprenticeships and all the facts and figures about the impact of apprenticeships um, I won't go through again, but we need to make sure that the quality of all of our apprenticeships matches the very best in the world. Um, but I wanted to focus more on um, access, and I'm really pleased that other speakers have talked about that. Um, and um, I think we obviously, I hadn't realised that the US figures about 10% of apprentices are women. Um, and uh, so we're doing much better on that overall at 53%. But um, we've got new figures out today that show for engineering, uh, last year there were 17,000 engineering apprenticeships across England, and of those 600 were women. So that's a pretty dismal percentage. So we need to do far, far better. That occupational segregation is a real issue, and women are far more likely to be apprentices in traditionally low-paid sectors. So the risk is that that occupational segregation in apprenticeships helps to perpetuate um, inequalities and, and gender inequalities um, that we already have. Whereas actually we know apprenticeships can be a great vehicle for tackling those inequalities. So I know the government's doing lots of stuff on this, but we think there's much more needs to be done too. We've also um, done some re research about um, um, applicants from BAME backgrounds. Um, and what we found is that um, um, BAME applicants are half as likely to be successful in their apprenticeship application. So there's a, actually not so much an issue with the proportion of uh, people from BAME backgrounds who are applying for an apprenticeship. The issue is more about the success rates flowing through. So some of that is about sector and geography. So a much higher um, BAME population here in London, much lower apprenticeships. So you've got more people chasing fewer places. Um, but actually there's much more going on and we need to understand what's happening during the course of the application process to mean that applications are half as likely to succeed. And then last fact on, on, the, on the access point. Um, so if you're eligible for free school meals, you're half as likely to be successful in getting a level three um, apprenticeship, so an advanced apprenticeship. So there's a real issue about household income and how that links through to the types of apprenticeships that people are able to access. And all of this matters because of all the stats and all the facts and figures about the impact of apprenticeships and how great they are as a, as a ladder of opportunity, which is the theme of this year's National Apprenticeship Week. Um, so we need to make sure that everyone has a chance to access those opportunities regardless of background and we're not there yet. We've got much, much more to do. So there's two things I just want to finish on that we can, we can do about uh, the access issue in particular. The first is to put it on the same platform and the same level as widening participation in higher education. So in higher education, we spend across England 750 million pounds a year on trying to make sure people from all backgrounds can access university education. That's approximately £750 million more than we spend on widening participation and access to apprenticeships um, and other forms of uh, technical education. So we need the same effort that we have on widening participation in HE on widening participation in apprenticeships. Um, second thing that we've called for is an apprenticeship premium to try to mirror the pupil premium and have um, an extra investment on um, background sectors, geographies, postcodes, so that there's more effort, there's more support, there's more incentives to try and tackle some of those um, inequalities. We know the pupil premium has helped to drive some of uh, some really interesting stuff going on in schools. We think an apprentice premium could do the same in apprenticeships. So. It's really great that we have such a jam-packed um, day today with all those days going on. Such a great push on apprenticeships. There's a debate going on in Parliament about apprenticeships. Um, 
and who'd have thought that sort of five, six, 10, 15 years ago, that's fantastic. It's great that we're on track to hit the three million figure because of the benefits that apprenticeships bring. We think it's really important that we underpin uh, quality as much as the three million target and that we um, do even more to promote access and to widen participation um, so that everyone can benefit from the opportunities that apprenticeships bring. And I shall stop there.